You know what I also want to want to throw out there that any one of our three characters could also be porn star names. <laughs> Open your mouth, prepare your tongue, because you're about to get a taste. I cannot believe we've gone 12 episodes without me being able to talk about Final Fantasy. Well, I know the doll is bad, so I gotta think the dusty balloon is less bad. I mean, if all life everywhere ends, what have I that's lost? <laughs> facial hair as a theme is not something I ever would have chosen. So yeah, that's the one that Rock is just sweaty the whole time. Yeah. He's got that good, good pointy Jafar beard. <laughs> I've got three pages of AMA citations. This is the Debate This Podcast. Hello, and welcome to Debate This, the show where no one is right, but someone is definitely wrong. In this show, we take time out of our busy adult lives to talk about comic, video games, and how there just isn't enough time to play all the great games that have come out in the last, like, month. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Even if I will never play Death Stranding. Ew. Yeah, hard pass. I, I had a third person. I Well, so actually, the first human being I've talked to that has actually played the game um, verified that it is a um, very, very pretty delivery simulator with weird <laughs> physics and gorgeous landscapes and i can't think of more words that would go into a sentence that would make me not want to play a game yeah i just like i only have so much time i only have so much time right like death yeah death stranding sounds like the perfect flow for that person who already wastes like four hours a night playing Civ. <laughs> Wait. when they get tired of Civ, they can play death stranding like, i just i feel like death stranding is the game for the gamer version of people who call movies films. That's Death Stranding to me. Yeah, yeah, that's actually very accurate. It's just the pretentious gamer crowd game. <laughs> At me, uh, fight, <laughs> fight, Matt over Death Stranding. Um, so, but that—that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about Nintendo. Um, what? What are we again? <laughs> again, always a much never, better thing to talk about. It never stops. Um. Nintendo's gotten really good at figuring out what its player base wants. Um, they've added competitive modes to its Mario platformers. It le they let you woo the waifu of your dreams in the Fire Emblem series. Or Edelgard, Edelgard, Edelgard. And, and letting it. you get all 807 Pokemon in one game. Why, why are you guys shaking your head? <laughs> oh, right. God, this was Kyle's thing. This was me. <laughs> <laughs> But where Nintendo has really made its ha made gaming fans happy is in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate series uh, game. Um, they kind of perfected their D DLC model from Super Smash Bros. Four. Um, they they perfected everything from Super Smash <laughs> yeah, Bros. Yeah, that was 4. not a good. That, <laughs> that was game not was a good terrible. One. They've they've you know they keep rolling out new stages, soundtracks, and decorations that all pay homage to not just Nintendo's past, but like all of gaming's past. They've They've started pulling everything into their little sphere of retro gaming. Um, but in 2008, Nintendo opened the gates of Super Smash Bros. to allow third-party characters. Um, most notably, our favorite, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, and it was a very well-received decision. Um, also included Snake and... Was there a third one in Brawl? Bayonetta. Brawl? Not in, oh, not, not in Brawl. No, not in Brawl. Brawl was just Snake and Sonic. I think it was Snake and Sonic. Okay. Yeah. No, it was Pac-Man and Brawl. No, nah, Pac-Man was, was a four. four. That was a four. Oh, really? Yeah. He and, yeah. he and Mega Man. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, since then, Nintendo's only widened the door to allow more outside characters, like we've just dis discussed. Um, letting more and more gaming fans fight with their favorite fighter, regardless of what platform it was on. Today, Nintendo has tasked me with finding the next DLC fighter that they will add to super smash bros this is a big opportunity for me guys so i don't want to mess it up so i've called in some backup to help me brainstorm today i am joined by todd better than all his friends but not good enough to play competitively thomas that is accurate that's <laughs> yeah, true that's i saw that's, that meme this week yeah um yeah. andrew edgeguarding henderson and matt spamming thunder cole now, I take personal offense <laughs> to that, because I do not play as Pikachu. We're going to put our heads together and pitch the next addition to the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Uh, can, I, can I add one thing? Please. If, if 
If by spamming thunder you mean spamming that stupid thing where Rob spins around indefinitely. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the murder that blender? Move. Oh, I love <laughs> the murder blender. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, get off your fucking high horse, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like just because it's not with Pikachu that you're better than what I accused you of. Yeah, tell that to Todd and his fucking meme cannon from King K. Listen, it's the worst. I'm going to bring you the sweatiest dad flops, uh, and you're going to take them. I don't ever want you to say that to me again. That's a phrase that doesn't make any sense outside the four of us, and all our fans are disgusted. Um, <laughs> pretty par for the course. Pretty par for the course. <laughs> um, so, guys, who's your fighter? Why? What do they, what do they like? What do they dislike? What's their fighting style? Um, you know, just right out, right out there. What just, you just what you got just doing it? What you lay got? It on what me we... like some sweaty dad flops. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna lay it on you. Ugh. So we okay. We still have not milked all of the your, milk. Your verb choices. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. I can't. Terrible. I can't. Just I can't put the words back in. I've already said them. But we haven't milked all of Nintendo's properties out enough so we're gonna we don't have to go far to find the next best dlc character and and i i know you guys have also or at least maybe maybe a couple of you have been into disney plus lately and i've been super into disney plus and i am drawing inspiration from disney plus for you today kyle thank you i'm i've been very into our the, my free trial of disney plus so far it's do you guys get a quarter every time you say disney plus because if you do you got to tell us no matt we don't get a quarter every time we say disney plus that no would we ridiculous. would have to tell you if we got a quarter every time we said <laughs> disney plus the brand new hit streaming service that comes to you through all of your local streaming devices <laughs> anyway this. <laughs> this is weird i don't like this bit so in 1997 disney introduced us to professor philip Bernard played by Robin Williams, who ultimately gave us Flubber. God, I was wondering and so, where we were going. <laughs> well, this is a long wa- walk. In, in 2019, and I guess technically 2018 because of a, a port, um, Nintendo let Professor E. Gad introduce us to the viscous hero we deserve, Gooigi. Uh, nope, 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 we're not doing, nope, uh-huh. we're not doing this. Uh, no, yeah, we are. We're not doing you're, Gooigi. You're no. welcome, welcome to my nightmare, boys. I'm calling the cops. <laughs> it's a Gooigi episode. You pervert, no. <laughs> so, Guigi is the counterpart to Luigi in the latest Luigi's Mansion game, and it is, an inst- it is an instant hit amongst all fans and a very specific part of the dark web. Uh, he is a natural ooh. choice for Smash uh. Ultimate Kyle, and I'm going to tell you why. So, Guigi would play like a slower, heavier version of Luigi, who would operate sort of like an Echo Fighter in the way that Ganondorf was initially a Captain Falcon Echo Fighter. But, you know, not the same, just somewhat similar. Right. And Guigi is going to bring you goo-based attacks that cover his enemies a la Inkling style and Flubber-esque physics that defy nature and God. He will. <laughs> he's going to throw goop. He's going to sling sludge. And he's going to overall just make things more sticky, a demand the hardcore Smash community has been asking for for years. Ugh. <sighs> Why? I- why do you insist on making it sexual? <laughs> Listen, I'm. If you make it sexual, that's on you. Guigi is a wholesome, pure. You stop it. Nope. No, Guigi's definitely a pervert. You're, he, you're a he's, criminal. <laughs> yeah, you belong in jail. Guigi has Randy Marsh in that ectoplasm episode of South Park energy, and it's disgusting. <laughs> also, I feel like introducing Guigi to this game brings back the trip physics from Brawl that everybody hated so much. And for that alone, you're a criminal. No, I would never do that. That's a sin. But he does have um, his his like animations when he like runs and turns the other way. He does this weird slide. And his moves are going to be moves like Sticky Slap, Goop Ugh. Throw, and Ugh. Sludge Slide. Ugh. Gross. He doesn't like water. I'll tell you that. You know those gummy hands you used to get at the arcade? I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Stop. Yeah, that's, that's the Sticky Slap. That's, that's it's fighting. It's his forward B. Gooigi. It's covered in dust and Cheetos. Yeah, does Gooigi also get not sticky and very hairy after you've used it three times? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I really wish that you wouldn't talk about making Guigi hairy. That is an extra layer of evil that this character doesn't need. Stop. We haven't done, we haven't done final smashes yet. 
<laughs> a thin his his ultimate is a thin film of hair, and, and it covers everyone. Andrew, save us from this hell. It's not going to be better. <laughs> Just different. <laughs> so take okay. us to your part of hell. I have a different circle of hell. Um, do do you are you guys familiar with Interplay's? 1994 smash hit for the SNES Clay Fighter? Absolutely not. No. I genuinely am. I All right, so played everyone's this, on board. I played this in third grade or fourth grade. One of those grades. A grade. A lot. Yeah. Um, Interplay, who better is better known for creating the Fallout series, um, in, uh, <laughs> decided released a series of games for the, the SNES and then later for the N64. That was um, not a twist all... I was expecting. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, that are all centered around clay animation because this was 1993 and and computer, celebrity deathmatch was popular and celebrity deathmatch was, was popular exactly it's a very specific niche so the first game was called claymates which was like a 2d side scroller platformer which was not good it was just collect the things and you're you be a bunch of you can like be a bunch of animals i remember that i also had that game and i yep. really liked it and it was really hard oh i really liked it when i was five too it was just not and when I was, I was actually watched a freaking long play of it today. It's not good. Oh no! That would be worth digging back out to play it again to remember how bad it probably is. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those. And then uh, a year later came Clay Fighter, which was um, kind of on the heels of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter Two and Killer Instinct, all the edgy two D fighting games that were just like killing it yeah. in arcades and on the consoles. Genesis had Mortal Kombat, so the Super Nintendo had. <laughs> Clay Fighter, Fighter. <laughs> which it was not one, better, just different. Not better, just different. No blood, just clay. Oh, Yay. was that really the tagline? Mom approved. No, I just made that up now, but it was oh, definitely okay. mom. It was mom approved. So it was your like rated E 10 for everyone version of uh, Mortal Kombat. Um, so I'm going intr- to quickly introduce the story to Clay Fighter because that'll get us introduce our our hero because of course you will uh because because i am me um so we open scene opens to uh playland playland your average stationary circus carnival uh just minding its own business until one day a giant purple meteor inexplicably made out of, made out of clay crashed into the center and for some plot. reason also mutated everything at the circus into More clay plot. monstrosities so now the the clay has basically given life to everything at the circus and the circus has been magically renamed clayland hmm. clayland no we weren't reacting on purpose Mm-mm. i, I want to make that clear <laughs> i love this era of gaming before <laughs> players demanded a solid story <laughs> out of their game yep um and and it, there weren't people in the circus like i want to be very clear like it was like the middle of the night so it was just a bunch of like inanimate sex decorations and uh, one of those set decorations who then turned into a bloodthirsty killing machine is the one and only Bad Mr. Frosty. What? Bad Mr. Frosty is, bad Mr. Frosty is to, and I quote, snow ordinary dude. Nope. Oh, shut up. Nope. The cops are now being uh. called on you. We're <laughs> They're <done>. rerouting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just not do this podcast. What if we just didn't, guys? This what was a bad, this was right? a mistake. No, no, no. I want to talk about Bad Mr. Frosty. He's uh he was the series mascot. He's got your super rad bad dude edge to him that you could only find in a mid '90s SNES knockoff to a better Genesis game. Ugh. Um, one one more quote. Uh, in to quote the game manual, the good manners of snowmen no longer mean anything to bad Mister Frosty. He believes in the cold of winter and little else. So let me tell you about Ugh. bad Mister Frosty. <laughs> Mister Frosty sounds like a bad version of is it Dollface from. Twisted Metal? What's the clown in Twisted Metal? Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth. That's Sweet Tooth. Sounds like a bad no. version of Diff- Sweet again, Tooth. Again, different, not better. Um, I thought it sounded kind of like a snow cone stand in the local mall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Do you want to go to the bad Mr. Frosty? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, me, let me draw you a picture. Let me, let, me speak, let me draw you a picture in words. So he's basically just Frosty the Snowman, but like with a mean face. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's, it, and, he's, it. and he's like pretty buff. Like he's like, oh, okay. he's buff. Because his snowballs are like muscles. Get it? Oh, God. Ugh. So like he's like Frosty the Snowman, but with attitude. And I, I That's wrote a this tagline. Is, this is my own. This is my own words. I was really proud of this. He might move like a glacier, but he sure hits like a snowplow. Well. Well then. Everyone's 
Everyone's laughing. You just do can't we, hear it. Do we want to pick um, a new topic and reconvene in half an hour, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to put it, to, to, to cap this all up, wrap this all up, Mad Mr. Frosty is one of your slow boys. He's, he's your beefy boy. He's, a, he's an incineroar or a DDD. Um, I picked a couple moves uh, that, from his normal move set. Um, he does things like throwing snow. He turns himself into snow. He will, throw, he will hurl himself as like an avalanche. It's a lot of snow-related stuff. Should be no surprises here. He does one move where he, goes, he just goes, ice pick. And, and he just hits, and hits him a, with an ice, an ice pick. pick. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. very creative. <laughs> Is, um, does it hit him with an ice pick? <laughs> yeah, um, but his taunts are really what I want to focus this time on. Because uh, when, he, when he wins his matches in the first game, he says, and, and after every match he goes, I'm bad, I'm cool, I'm no one's fool. Ugh. And then he also says, stay cool. Ugh. Is that like a Motley Crue lyric? No, he just, he might, I don't know, maybe. Um, and then he says, call me daddy. He just says, call me daddy. <laughs> 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 like, he just says that. He just says, call me daddy. I knew that I was going to bring some weird energy to this episode. I didn't think anyone would try and fight me for the king of weird energy, but you're coming for the crown with the line, call me daddy out of nowhere. Well, you know, and yeah. I, don't, I don't trust Matt to not bring weird energy with his answer <laughs> either. You so. absolutely should not. You definitely should not trust me on that. So I'm, I'm looking up um, Clay Fighter right now. It looks like one of the writers went on to just exclusively write the ice puns for Batman Forever. Yeah, that's, that's that's the same that's the same vicinity there. Yep. 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 He he used this as a springboard to get his his Hollywood job. Just writing. I can't tell if you're telling the truth or not. That's a lie. I made that entire thing up. That was a joke. I, I couldn't tell though. <laughs> I mean, it it could very well be absolutely true. Um, there is. I don't want to keep talking about Clay Fire, but I kind of want to keep talking about Clay Fire. So there is a sequel called C2 Judgment Clay. There was a sequel. No, there wasn't. <laughs> Stop it. That's not real. <laughs> it's called C2 Judgment Clay. And uh, he, instead of a top hat, he trades his top hat in for a backwards hat. And he looks like bad Mr. Frosty version of Prison Mike. Good. <laughs> Whenever we get around to doing the which video game needs a remake, I call dibs on C2 Judgment Clay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he wears a backwards baseball cap because of his time in prison. Also, not a lie. What? What? Yeah, he did. Oh my he gosh. did time. He did time, and I quote: "A maximum security ice block Ugh. for for breaking and entering the North Pole and assaulting Santa Claus." Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man! I know, I know, I know that was a lot, but I really wanted to share Judgment Clay. I wanted to make sure that everyone's aware that It's like that that going exists. back and forth on that, like, so bad it's good line. Like, it's, it's yeah. just hitting it. It's, it's goddamn fantastic. <sighs> bad Mr. Frosty. There you go. I actually really like this fighter. I really like another big, slow, ice-based Frost fighter that is also somehow Prison Mike. Um, that's, He's prison. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> Uh, Matt, did you bring something normal to the party? I hope not. You know, I'm I'm not as far off of normal as these two, but um, I don't know that I'd call it normal. Uh, so over the last year or so, we have seen Nintendo do this thing with their DLC fighters where they like to pick a fighter that has a small portion of the Smash community really, really stoked and then everybody else kind of like, who is that? What game is that from? This is right. Continue. You know, yeah. like if it's Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury and a bunch of people are like, holy shit, Fatal Fury. And then most everybody else is like, uh, what? Who is who is that? Have you played that game? Um, and, and I would argue the same thing for like Joker from Persona 5. So I feel like when I bring Longhorn from 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker to the table, a couple people are going to be really excited, and everybody else just doesn't need to know. They'll just accept him when he gets there. 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker has characters. It does. It has exactly five. Five characters in American okay. Pro Trucker. Um, well, excuse me, 18-wheeler, colon, American, American Pro, Pro Trucker. Trucker. Yeah, get it right. Uh, brought to arcades by none other than Sega in 2000. So we don't even have to like rework a brand deal to get this guy in here. Sega's already got the properties for this character. Oh, I totally remember this game. Hell yeah, you do. Pizza Hut and Dave and Buster's yeah. fan favorite cart. 
Uh, this game kind of kicks ass, though. It does. It does. <laughs> it was ported to the GameCube in 2002. You guys are right in my argument for me. This is the best day. So there are, <laughs> like I said, five now, characters. Hold oh, on. Ahead, when it Kyle. came to the GameCube, did they sell the big, could you buy a big trucker wheel to go with it? Because that was the only appeal of the game. I don't think so. I don't know. I never owned this game. I only rented it a couple of times. That makes me sad. Go on. Yeah, I'm sure there was a peripheral that you could use for it, but I don't know that they sold it uh, as a bundle or anything. Anyway, like a were... mech warrior, mech uh, mech warrior style, like battalion or steel battalion, whatever it was, the big controller that had to sit on a full desk. Only it's an entire truck um, rig. Truck rig. Yeah, that's yeah. The, the the box of uppers and downers is sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. So there are five characters in 18-wheeler colon American Pro Trucker. There is Asphalt Cowboy, Streamline, Highway Cat, Nippon Maru, and then my boy, Big Fat Bald Longhorn. Wait, uh, pause, pause real quick. This is very important. Hit me. Any one of those people could be touring with Lil Nas X right now. <laughs> <laughs> most, most likely Asphalt Cowboy. Um, <laughs> yep. my, cause like growing up as a kid, I was never sure if these names were the names of the trucks or the names of the drivers. Oh, see, um, that would have been my assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Apparently it's the name of the drivers, uh, as I confirmed today. So to read you this quote from strategywiki.org about Longhorn, oh his truck is the slowest of the group, but it's also the toughest, most durable vehicle. And that is all of the information that I found on Longhorn from American Pro Trucker. <laughs> Which is great. Uh, he has a <laughs> speed of two and a torque and toughness of four. And he's coming to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate to lay some good old American whoop ass. Um, Matt, question. <laughs> Hit me, Todd. <laughs> you, you gave us, like, numbers of his abilities, but not really, like, are those good numbers or bad numbers? Con you just gave us numbers. They're out numbers. of 100. <laughs> uh, uh, judging by the picture I found on Google Images, those are out of four. So his oh, speed ooh. is, like, half and torque and toughness are 100%. All right, dude moves like a uh, he he moves like Rassle Cat. Uh, some might say he dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Oh, uh, so there it is. No one <laughs> wanted to say it. We are bringing Longhorn from eighteen wheeler colon American Pro Trucker from Sega to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and he is going to move like an eighteen wheeler trucker getting out of his long haul at a truck stop. He's gonna walk real slow, but he's gonna hit real mean. He's always going to have his belly exposed and all of his moves are going to hit harder than Ganondorf's. He's just going to be an absolute power machine that's really hard to move, except he walks kind of like a like he might have a limp because we're not sure. But we, he thinks he left his purple seat pad somewhere between <laughs> Kansas and Arkansas. So <laughs> you said you're we're bringing Longhorn from 18 wheeler colon American pro trucker to smash to smash. Yes. Do we have to? Absolutely. I oh. mean, if if, <laughs> if we have options, to bring okay. Guigi, yeah. If the <laughs> options are Guigi, Bad Mister Frosty, and Longhorn from Eighteen Wheeler Colon American <laughs> Pro Trucker, I don't feel as bad about my choice as I did when I got into this podcast. You know what? I also want to want to throw out there that any one of our three characters could also be porn star names. Accurate, Todd. <laughs> kindly, kindly remove yourself from the call. <laughs> <laughs> i i do what is that porn that bad mr frosty has said with non-ironically i won't play in this headspace nope. with you <laughs> nope that's i'm done kyle you can yeah, move on yeah, please just, move on okay. how, how can we move on <laughs> we live in this moment forever unless you want me to like i mean i can no. run through a whole move set no I got we're it. done we're good we got it um, I'm a, trying to think of porn names for a year without Santa Claus. A big, a big part of what Nintendo <laughs> does is build a new stage for the new characters. <laughs> is is Heat Miser anything? Is that anything? <laughs> Wait, it, a, a a rear without Santa Claus? Is that anything? There it is. Did that do it. I was gonna go with a year that's, without Santa's dong. That's pretty good. <laughs> 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 all right now we can move on there's that weird energy i thought i was gonna bring <laughs> what was that Found you were it. saying about new stages kyle <laughs> <laughs> nintendo but nintendo likes to bring new stages when they when you buy dlc and download new characters they put a stage with that character you just bought so you so you have a good time 
and it matches the character or the game they're from. How cool and wholesome. Hmm. What what describe the stage Nintendo would bundle with your character in the DLC? Uh, Kyle, the consummate professional. I've got good news. I've got good news for you, Kyle, and everyone else. This one is not this this answer is not the weird energy answer. I think I got that it's, out of me. It's not a I'm it's shocked. not a just a, a gooey stage, a gooey final destination. I mean, is that what you want, Kyle? It's is not, that what you're is that But that's I mean, what that's what we're that's what this <laughs> episode is steered towards so far <laughs> well i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a good answer so luigi's mansion 3 uh the bosses are always like there's always some fun stage with some fun boss with some like special thing going on so i, I drew inspiration from that one of the boss ghosts you have to fight in luigi's mansion luigi's mansion 3 is named fish hooks and it is a is a ghost shark with a like captain hook hook which is pretty sweet <laughs> also um, my favorite sci-fi original movie <laughs> Shark. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's a uh, that's definitely up there with Sharknado and Croc Croc or whatever they. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mega Shark versus Ultra Croc is what you were looking for. It was actually, and I hate that you knew that. <laughs> um, so Fish Hook is a shark ghost, and when you fight Fish Hook, he can possess his own pirate ship, and he twists it and he turns it. And he also commands the ghost on the ship to throw exploding barrels. So what we end up with is this this ship that kind of plays out like the Toon Link ship a little bit, crossed with the Pokemon stages that have the hazards on them, mm. where, like I said, occasionally there's going to be an exploding barrel. Every now and again, it's going to like twist and turn, so like the platforms are facing different directions. And occasionally, there's going to be a ghost shark that appears to dash across the bottom of the stage to make you real sad. Um... It's important to note this is not a tournament legal stage because the hazards are terrible. This is the stage that exists to make you really angry because if you lose, it was likely because of the hazards, not because of anyone's skill. Gotcha. Yeah, this sounds mm. awful. No, it's yeah. a bad stage. Good, good it's job. it's a bad stage. They went all in on character development and it was like 5% stage development. I see. Okay. I mean, that's what you get with Guiji. It's all, uh, he's, you know, he's... <laughs> I don't I'm I'm done. He's all he's all form and no function. <laughs> there it is. Uh, all right. Do you want a sticky final uh, no, destination, I like, Kyle? I is liked, that what you no, want? No, I liked your stage a lot, actually. I that it it's weird because the last answer was so disgusting from all three of you, and now this is like a legitimate answer to the question, and I don't know what to do. Kyle, I'm gonna. I'm what I, I want to tell you today. I'm gonna build you like. Have you ever heard of a compliment sandwich? <sighs> no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go back. Where, where it's like a good thing and then a bad thing, then a good thing. Andrew. Well, <laughs> let's no. Let's let Todd dig this hole. No, he's gonna I'm do. Just saying he's the, gonna do bad, good, bad. He was gonna. I'm gonna. gonna go, I've got some. I've got some gooey bread waiting for you pervert, on this sandwich. Oh yeah, pervert. <laughs> fine, oh. pervert. Oh. Um. Hey, Kyle. Do you want to hear a really dumb thing? Because I'm going to say a really dumb thing. Right Go now. for it. Keep it coming. I don't know what to um, expect anymore. So we've covered the first two in the Clay Fighter series. <laughs> um, now to touch on the third one, which is uh, probably the most ambitious and also the shittiest one, which is called <laughs> Clay Fighter colon 63 and a third for the, N <laughs> for the N64. So edgy. So yeah. cool. Yeah, that's actually, uh, I think that's based off a Naked Gun title. Yeah, it's not it is. better, it's just, yeah. It's yeah. just, it's even less funny. Um, Clay <laughs> Fighter 63 and a third. Uh, they, put it, they put this crappy 2D fighter in a 3D space, and it's bad. It is way worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's oh, uh, something like about, that. like, yeah, a bunch of the guys, so it's like a bunch of the characters are just, like, they just live, they just exist now. And they're all in an airplane, and crash land, <laughs> they're just in an airplane. Clay Fighter Air. They're just taking a casual ride in an airplane. Um, there's this whole backstory where, like, I guess Bad Mr. Frosty, like, went through a real dark period and uh, went through therapy and, like, talked through his feelings and kind of, like, came out of it a better man. Came out a, came out a good Mr. Frosty? A better, a, a decent Mr. Frosty. He's still, like, bad. But, a reformed like, Mr. Frosty? He's like, he's, like, Sonic bad. Like, he's like, oh, bad. Gotcha. Bone. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, he was a lounge singer, apparently. I don't know if that's true. That was on the wiki. Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, anyway, so he crash lands on Claymoto Isle, where, um, where he's met with his old nemesis, Santa Claus. Pause for reaction. Wait, so the, the abominable <laughs> snowman's enemy is Santa Claus. 
Yes. Uh, yeah, Mr. Matt, Frosties. keep up, please. Yeah. Thanks. I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying <laughs> yeah. hard. I'm asking clarifying questions to make sure I understand. Well, Matt, this might help clarify. So it's actually not Santa now. Now Santa Claus is known as Sumo Santa. Oh, even better. Is it? <laughs> and now he's evil. <laughs> it, it exists. So with that context, now that we've effectively colored this, um, our stage is Sumo Santa's workshop atop Clay Moto Isle. Okay. So our, our not tournament version is really just, it's, in effect, it's just a giant conveyor belt. Like, think the Bridge of Elden. But like it moves okay. <laughs> every once in a while. Okay. And there's like little every once in a while there might be like a little mashers. But what's what's going on? It's you know, some video game ass shit. What's going on in the background is it's a factory. It's a toy factory, but it's making clay. And oh. it's making clay it's making clay figures. So do you guys know like the Mega Man level that everybody hates where <laughs> the <laughs> the fucking like yellow devil appears and takes up three fourths of the stage and shoots oh, you and you God. can't hit it? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, we're bringing that to the <laughs> back to the pro, back to the field here. That's what the the community's been asking for, I think. Yeah. So like every twenty to twenty five seconds, a big old <laughs> block of clay is just gonna drop in the middle of the platform and just, and just be obnoxious and in the yeah, way and, and terrible. And it's it, well, it's gonna be. I'll tell you level, some levels of terrible here. It's gonna be one of seven creatures. <sighs> I don't need that many options. Oh my from, from, oh. from the past interplay clayverse or interclayverse. Stop it. Uh, so we've got Muxter the cat and Globmeister the gopher, both from Claymates. I remember those guys, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Todd. See, we all came in and we thought Todd was going to be the bad guy. But I think Andrew's the <laughs> no. actual bad guy. I use, I use my powers for evil. And I was the good. obvious villain while Andrew was the real villain the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a, uh, you're a, uh, oh, I forget. I'm forgetting Final Fantasy IV characters. It doesn't matter. You we guys wouldn't recognize it anyway. We um, uh, we've also got Ichibod Clay and Blue Suede Goo. Jeez. That is, the, yeah. that is the, that is the, that is the pumpkin and the Elvis fighters. Yep. I hate it. The Elvis this. impersonator. I hate it. Um, <laughs> and the blob, which is just a blob. And then the finally, the last two are going to be from C2 Judgment Clay. Uh, we've got Hoppy. Who is just a big muscly rabbit who's supposed to be like Rambo, <laughs> and uh, Octohead, which is just an octopus. That seemed like that was a lazy one they phoned in at the end. Yeah, yeah. and we need a name for our octopus yeah. character, Octohead. It was either that or the big banana called Nana. So <laughs> he's not the most phoned in. <laughs> I would have gone all in on Nana. Nana. Yeah. Well, Nana's Nana's DLC. You got to pay for Nana. That's our sound. <laughs> that's our sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> You want Nana, you gotta pay extra. Oh man. So yeah, that's um Sumo Santa's workshop. The art style in the Santa that you have presented to us is very it's very good and I hate it. <laughs> like it's very well done. It's very good, bad. And it's disgusting. It's so weird the way yeah. his fat rolls just end <laughs> abruptly. Like he's got yeah. so much sag on the like the underarms and the sides, and then just a gut. <laughs> yeah. The longer you look at this photo, the more details you start to notice, yeah. and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's haunting. Wait, I need you guys to follow this this with me. So if you look at his left nipple as an eyeball, <laughs> and his belly button as a nose hole, and the like, it's Yoshi. It's Yoshi. It's Yoshi. Yeah, I see. I see oh, Yoshi yeah. here. There's Yoshi in his belly. <laughs> All right, listeners, this is definitely going to be the uh, the image that we post. So uh... <laughs> yep. I regret. Yep. I regret everything <laughs> see what you did i regret all all of my decisions that have led me to this moment today <laughs> i regret them that have led you to a sad fleshy yoshi belly Matt, describe your stage yeah so i can stop this and forget oh man i definitely can so luigi's mansion has all this ghosty weirdness and clay fighters has all this clay weirdness you know what 18 wheeler cole at american pro trucker has has truck driving kyle that's just about it. Has truck driving across the country. So what is Longhorn's stage going to be? It's going to be on a truck driving across the country. Uh, so if you have never heard of United States Route 50, uh, it is a transcontinental highway that stretches from West Sacramento, California in the west to Ocean City, Maryland on the east coast. And the Nevada portion crosses the center of the state straight through the desert and was named the loneliest road in America. 
And that is where Ooh. Longhorn Stage is going to be. It's going to be on a flatbed truck in the loneliest road in America. You know that one level, and I think it's like Guitar Hero 2 or 3, where you're filming a music video on the, the back of like a flatbed in a production yes. office? So it's going to be like that, except actually on a road. Uh, you're going to be fighting on a flatbed truck, which is going to be kind of cool because the left side where the driver's cab would be will be sort of like a wall, like the new King of Fighters stadium that came with Terry. And then the right side is just going to be open. And then right below the flatbed is going to be a road that's going to work like Big Blue, uh, the F-Zero stage, where if you fall off, yes. you just get like sucked away. I was going to say, you just made up, you just made Big Blue. Well, I mean, yeah, but Big like... Big Blue with walls. Without all of the crazy like level jumping. Like, I'm not going to lie, this level's kind of boring. It's a, it's a truck driving yeah. game, Andrew. <laughs> I don't have much to go on here. Big Blue changes... Yeah, like the platforms on yeah. it. I think Matt is describing a more static <laughs> stage with the moving floor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so more like the Phantom Train level. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's what I got from it. So the thing is, like the there's not going to be any actual like major hazards other than the road underneath it. Um, what the hazard is going to be is the stage music that comes with this stage, which you absolutely <laughs> cannot change, uh, and it's just going to be <laughs> smash yep. hit. Uh, 18 wheeler by American musical duo trout fishing in America, where they just count the number of tires on an 18 wheeler over and over and over again. I swear to God, if you've never heard this song, you've missed out on a weird part of my childhood, but it's real. It's super real. It's a song. It exists. <laughs> is it, is it in the game? Is it in uh, um, American Pro Trucker 18 wheeler? No, 18 no. Wheeler, since we're colon American since Pro we Trucker. Already, <laughs> <laughs> since we already have the property and nobody's made one of these games since like 2004 when the weird sequel came out, we can spend a little extra money on music licensing. And that's where we're going to get 18 wheels on a big rig by Trout Fishing in America. Um, as it is my thing to do, I would like to read you the first uh, three lines of lyrics from 18 wheels yes, on a big please. rig. Please. By Trout Fishing yeah. in America. It goes, oh, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, wheels on a big rig. That's it. That's the first three lines of the song. So it's I've the camp definitely song. heard this song before. Yeah, it's oh, my camp, God. It's the camp song. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing this is the sound of thousands of people clicking the 30-second skip button on their <laughs> podcast <laughs> apps right now. Whatever. Whatever. It's, it's the hazard. The hazard is that that song is with the stage, and no matter what you want to do, you can't change the song on the stage. So, so it's, it's, like a meta, it's like a meta hazard. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly a meta hazard. So it, it's, it's Matt's version of picking polka floats, except the, the polka floats isn't the stage itself. It's the music you have to Man, listen to while you I fight. forgot about polka floats. What a fucking yeah. level that was. That's like Haribo terrible. Uh, Poka yeah. floats not being in in ultimate is like the hill I will die on. That, I'm so upset that stage is not in ultimate. I forgot. Obviously, about that it. is bad. That is bad that it's not in there. The best part is where you see the community has tried to make knockoff versions of it in map <laughs> yeah, it. Oh, and it's yeah. so bad. <laughs> it's terrible. It's good. The the reason what makes it so bad is just the fact that like every other every other level is. And like with that that shitty Pac Man level, which is way hell way the hell worse than oh, any of yeah. than yes. Poke Floats ever was, yeah. or the uh, the Game and Watch level. Like all those levels are so much worse. Oh yeah, I actually enjoyed Poke like legitimately, unironically enjoyed Poke Floats. Um, mm -hmm. out of all the other like moving platform stages. Yeah. But what was the what was the very first um the Pokemon you start standing on? Is it Chansey? Uh, yes, I think so. Because, like, that was always the best part that, like, there's that split second where no Pokemon are on the screen and, yeah. like, everyone has to be in free fall and then that just, like, pops up. Yeah. Yeah. It is very good. I'm pretty sure it is Chansey that you start on. Um, Matt, I, maybe I missed this earlier, but is your guy Texas Longhorn? Is he? Oh, it's just uh, Longhorn. Actually, it's not Texas Longhorn. He has no state affiliation. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Longhorn, unaffiliated Longhorn. Is he in his truck when you're at, when you're fighting? We, I didn't really hear any moves. Like, 
it just oh no like, i offered to go he through just the kind of like and no and told we no. told him not to. yeah no he's okay. not in his truck he's okay. he's very well outside of his truck which i would like to say okay. in the game 18 wheeler colon american pro trucker you only see him outside of his truck at the level select or the character select screen. So we are taking a lot of liberties, but he does have a move set. Again, I'm happy to go through it, no, but I've been don't. told no a couple times. <laughs> no, I I assumed I assumed it was like Captain Falcon where like yes, he's a driving character, but Captain Falcon exists and fights out of his car in this world. Exactly. I think of him as being the size of K Rule but with wario's body mass and that he hits like donkey kong and yeah has a has like a, a captain falcon vibe to him that's that's the the access i'm on he also farts because his entire body is made of gas station taquitos <laughs> yes <laughs> he's got pretty much the gate of ganondorf except with like a strange limp on the left side <laughs> again because he lost his driving cushion at a truck stop three states somewhere back. between kansas and arkansas <laughs> there it is that's the lore i hate it it's, Do you want it's some all more? terrible we, we can, i hate it keep um, going squirtle is the first pokemon in pokefloats oh there you oh. go yeah i, I knew it. chansey is like one of the last ones um well, as I said, I hate all of this. <laughs> let's let's keep let's keep going into this this hate zone and just make me hate it even more and uh describe your final smash. The most the most cinematic and controversial addition to Super Smash Bros. Um describe what your character's final smash is cuz they're all fun and enjoyable and no one has a bad time ever when final smashes start happening. <laughs> So for Guiji's final smash, you're going to need some Guiji lore for context. And some Purell. And some Purell. <laughs> uh, they don't make water hot enough. <laughs> so <laughs> Guiji was created by Professor Egad when um, Professor Egad spilled his special coffee in with some ghost goo and some of Luigi's DNA. All right. So that gave birth to Guiji because the third Luigi's Mansion needed an additional feature to be exciting, and it also needed a default character that your younger sibling would play. So, Guiji, for his final smash, he summons Professor Egad, who shows up and splashes his radioactive coffee in a huge arc in front of him. And any character hit by that coffee is immediately gooped down by a gooified copy of themselves. Ew. So, they are, they are stuck in place, and they also take constant goo damage while they are restrained so you got like a button mashing damage climbing situation oh okay um okay and uh it's important because it's goopy and also much like every other dlc fighter introduced at first it's very broken most importantly kyle guiji's final smash is titled goops i did it again oh oh man wow Get it because it happened once before, and they made Guiji. You like shot way up here with the line. Um, <laughs> it's it's great first of all because it's goopy, and then shot right back down to the bottom with goops. I with goops. I did it again. You're welcome. Oh, I just I know I know what I'm doing here. That was a roller coaster, and you hated it. And I don't know what I I don't know anymore. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what love and hate are, Todd. <laughs> I will tell you, part of my research for this episode today was watching a YouTube video titled Can Guiji Love? <laughs> and not a single bit of that sentence I just said was a lie. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's what was, in my browser history. So what was the conclusion, Todd? Can um, Guiji love? Or did you just end up watching a weird um porn video i it was on youtube so uh i think they decided that that guiji i think it was something in the in the area of either they don't know and they don't want to decide for guiji like who are we to say <laughs> if guiji is capable of love that's not our place that's a, that's a very progressive take on guiji 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 is the embodiment of of man's avarice <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Guiji's the super ego. Is that what, is yeah. that what we're doing here? <laughs> but he was he was created he was created out of out of hate, but he can learn to love. It's it's funny because again in my research for this, 
when they introduce to you the mechanics of Gooigi, it's literally like a 10 second tutorial of press the right thumbstick in, you'll summon Gooigi, press it twice to recall Gooigi. You can control him, he can slip through bars. All right, you got it. Like, and then that's <laughs> yeah. like the end of it. Um, all right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, do you need me to say the, the finishing, uh, that last sentence again, Kyle, or you want me to get a, the, let's get it. Yeah. Let's get a clean take of that. So, yeah. so Kyle, Gooigi's final smash is titled don't goops. I did it again, man. I hated it just as much the second time. I thought maybe it'd be better and it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't better. I played with your heart. I got. Suck down the drain. Uh uh-uh. uh, man. Ooh, gooey, gooey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that sentence. That uh, felt bad. Andrew, get us out of here. You're not going um, to, though. Well, no. <laughs> it's it's uh, not better, it's just <laughs> different. <laughs> yep. It's bad Mr. Frosty's tagline. Uh, <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> Unexplicably. <laughs> uh, no, it was call me daddy. Call me, call me daddy. Stay cool. Anyway, Bad Mr. You Frosty's do, you final don't smash. Do the third one. <laughs> no. Uh, st- st- uh, uh, stay cool. Um, Bad Mr. Frosty's final smash is called Snow Cone Squeeze. Or how should I put it? Snow Cone Squeeze. Because he has to say everything that he does. Um, this is one of his four signature claytalities. Uh, I'm, I'm mm. really surprised that Mortal mm. Kombat didn't come for them for that. Somebody got paid a lot of dollar bills to make that. Um, yeah, this is one of his, one of his four claytalities, arguably the most uh, impressive one. He grabs his opponent and yells snow cone squeeze, because of course he does. Yes. And, and in the game, the, the claytalities, because again, this is like clay and they can't show a lot of violence or anything. They try to be Mortal Kombat, but like these, these all are very boring. It's really just them like doing a super punch or a super kick. And then just the other enemy just, like, exploding. Oh, okay. But there's no animation. They just, like, disappear. Right. Or they'll just, like, they'll just split the sprite in half. <laughs> it's, like, really shitty. Good. They, 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 they ran out of all the animation budget at this point. So, like, what, what it sounds like on paper is that he, like, squeezes them and, like, mashes them into a snow cone. But really, he just, like, reaches over, does, like, a lunging animation and then the enemy just, like, disappears. Okay. And then you're just, and then in his hand is, like, a mound of just, like, red like red goop red clay like bloody clay is the yeah implication. yeah, oh, gotcha. yeah. It's edgy so yeah. edgy so so edgy. so what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna take this nugget and we're gonna really um uh, plus it up here okay so when when bmf gets the smash ball uh Don't, BMF. no one's calling him bmf, <laughs> BMF. no one oh not a goodness. single person <laughs> you can't slide that in that sentence and think that it's normal or okay <laughs> Stay cool. <laughs> um, VMS is going to grab his opponent to, uh, to initiate the move. So you got to be really close. Go ahead. BM- <laughs> Do you have a question? BMF, Those... BMF is, um, is your high point so far. Like, got it. Like Todd, ha- Todd hit his high point in the last question, too. That's got what it. I was Nailed getting it. at. Uh, so if, if it connects, the way that you know that is we see him jump off screen with his opponent. Uh, we then smash cut to BMF behind a cart in what looks like a carnival in the winter time. Uh, he's wearing an apron and a little button, and uh, he's oper- He's very. He's smiling. Oh, he's happy. He's he's cool. He's uh he's operating what looks to be like a meat grinder. He's just like kind of grinding, grinding, grinding. He grabs a big old paper cup, empties the contents of the grinder into it, which it looks like red ice. So he's taking the original animation. Um, he then holds it up and smiles when, again. Did not make this up when the small snowman that lives inside his top hat grabs it <laughs> and starts eating it. What? Wow. Yeah, because the one thing I didn't mention is he's got a move in Clay Fighter 63 and a third where he goes, get him, little buddy. And uh, there's a little snowman inside his top hat and he punches him and it's like a high punch. And he says, get him, little buddy. Yes. Every single time. Oh, yes, you did goodness. forget to mention that. <laughs> I wish you would have forgot, like, to mention it again so times. so so of course because we need to bring that same level of energy here he says there you go little buddy <laughs> and that's snow cone squeeze this game had multiple iterations <laughs> people Three bought games. this i i played all of them wow i enjoyed i enjoyed that a lot 
Pirates for some reason. I'm like <laughs> I'm like full circle back around. I'm I'm on board. Nice. Maybe this was like a the producers like a, a the producers springtime for Hitler situation where like they thought it was going to be bad and they were going to run off with like investor money. Dude, and this was the same year that Bubsy 3D came out. Like it was Chinatown. <laughs> like, people people yeah. were just throwing I money think, at everything. I think that's more at what it was. There were no rules at this point. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, Ocarina of Time hadn't come out yet. Game, people didn't know how to make games. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the fucking Wild West. <laughs> uh, Matt, what's, um, what's Longhorn's final smash? Bring us home. Oh, man, I'll bring you the whole way home. Longhorn's final smash is called the 10-4, good buddy. Uh, <laughs> so good. Longhorn, uh, when he activates his final smash, reaches up and do- does the only way that we as regular civilians know how to communicate with truck drivers, and that's to do the pull the horn motion. Uh, he reaches up and he pulls the horn, <laughs> and a huge truck horn sound explodes and anybody in the radius of that truck horn sound is knocked into the cinematic that is okay. Longhorn's final smash. Um, so there's like one other consistent character in 18 wheeler colon American pro trucker. I'm not sure if they have a name, but it's just the, uh, the guy on the CB radio who gives you your instructions at the beginning of each level as to like where you're going and what you're hauling there. Uh, okay. So if you can call that a character, yeah, right. It's just a voice. It's a voice. So you're gonna hear the the two two to the horn, and then you're gonna hear the guy on the CB radio say, "Well, Longhorn, you got a long road ahead of you, brother. You better take some extra fuel <laughs> with you." And everybody who got caught <laughs> in that uh, that. <laughs> No, you keep going. I'm trying. Yeah. Uh, everybody who got caught in that horn sound is going to get stuck on the front of Longhorn's truck, which he is now behind the wheel of, um, which is really kind of a like terrifying truck. It's very twisted metal. It's got like a big crazy taxi type breaker on the front of it and some Longhorns on either side. And they're going to get nice. stuck on the front of that truck. And he's going to drive. You're going to see him drive through a cinematic as he's like driving down the road. And during that cinematic, if you're caught in the final smash, you got to try and button mash. And if you button mash enough, you'll get off of the front of the truck and sucked up underneath the truck and run over. But you'll get like spit out the back after the cinematic. But if you don't button mash enough or your damage percentage is too high, the truck will go across the screen like Ganondorf's final smash and just carry, carry you with it the off the side. stage and you and you die. Yeah. OK. Yep. So All if right. you've got a low percentage and you can button mash fast enough. Uh, you'll get sucked out of the back, but if if you don't, you'll just get carried off the front. It's got similar energy to, like, DDD's cinematic Final Smash, where it's like, whoa, where in the hell did this come from? Why has he got a devil mask? Why is his hammer made of, like, fire and hatred? And why are we in a steel cage? Um, except you're going to get that uh, that sweet CB radio voice of, well, Longhorn, you got a long road ahead of you, brother. You better take some extra fuel with you. That's... That's what I wanted to hear again. Um, yeah. That was going to be my question, if you could repeat that, because I need a yep. new text message sound. I was going to say, um, that's Todd's alarm in the morning now. <laughs> that's, oh, are you kidding me? That's going to put me to sleep. I want that to be the last thing I hear before I close my eyes. <laughs> I uh, I thought I was the only one drawing inspiration from Disney+. Plus. Here you, uh, Lotso Hug and Bear, all of the, uh, all of the, the <laughs> yeah. fighters on the front of this truck. <laughs> you better take some fuel with you. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That sounds, that voice is the, like, it just rings in the, uh, the Borderlands guy who's like, come and take a ride, whatever, you oh, like, yeah. get a new vehicle. <laughs> yeah. It's the same guy. It's the same actor. <laughs> the same voice actor. He's just doing that. Anything else? No, I mean, not really. I, like, I, I, <laughs> 18 wheeler colon American rests. pro trucker just is not giving me a lot to go on, but, um, I, I think if you are a truck driving character, and you get a final move. That final move, deservedly, is your opportunity to run over people with your truck. And that's what I have given Longhorn today. All right. M- Matt, I see that you, you put a, an image in the, the document, or someone did. I did. And you said that his, his speed is two and his toughness is four, which are, it seems to be out of four. What you didn't tell us about is his torque is four. I did. I no, said his did. torque is four. <laughs> oh, I I blocked that right. Oh out. man, how could you block out the torque? Todd, Todd chose to forget. Yeah, I just I didn't. I will now take 
this character from this game because I can't find it in the notes to read it again. Oh, I will now take Longhorn from 18 Wheeler colon American Pro Trucker a lot more serious. <laughs> this, that torque does a does a load of difference. All right, guys, I'm gonna take these suggestions to the Nintendo execs <laughs> and throw them in the trash on the way yeah, upstairs. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> and throw them in the trash and take three three uh, different more safe yeah, examples to them. That's the right call. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a short break while I do that. And uh, when I come back, we'll see if they have any other super secret questions for us. Are you tired of the domestic discussions of the more pedestrian podcasts? Looking for a more enlightened way to talk about video games? Then look no further than Left Trigger, Right Trigger, the video game book club where four hosts discuss the more sophisticated issues in games. Topics include... Body parts. Zelda. The Division. Hyperlight Tokyo Drifter. Good vibes. Time Machine. Doing the cab. Uh, biscuit faces. Being terrible. Muzapan sex dance. The faces are terrible. When the mouse is away, or when the cat's a mouse. I can't tell white people apart. My body is going to dissolve. I'm playing wine. The Gashapon is just a womb. Man, this game's got hot orcs. <clears throat> Left trigger, right trigger. Your video game book club. Wow, that was what? really disappointing. All right, we're we're I'm I'm back from my meeting with the Nintendo execs. Um, How'd it go? Did it go well, guys? I gotta say, they I I. I tried to throw out your all your suggestions in the lobby while I waited for him. I tried real quick, real quick to come up with three new ones, and they they saw them. They saw your suggestions, and, <laughs> and I gotta say, they're actually on board. They they love it. Um, all these rights are gonna be really mm. cheap to get, so like that that definitely works in their favor. They already have Gooigi and these other two companies don't exist anymore. Clay, Clay fighter, <laughs> Clay fighter and 18 wheeler aren't, aren't series anymore. So, um, they, they really liked what we got. Um, they like that you did a lot of the work for them ahead of time. So what they said was going to kind of make or break the decision here. And this is on the hush hush. Cause, um, we're not supposed to know about this is how it's going to fit, how this character will fit into the, Super Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe. What's really going to make or break this is how well that the casting of that goes. So our super secret bonus question today is cast your character for the Super Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe that includes Detective Pikachu, uh, Sonic the Hedge, the, the fixed Sonic the Hedgehog movie, <laughs> and um, the upcoming illumination studios uh mario and luigi movie or super mario bros movie but until the illumination movie comes out which includes yeah. the john like super mario brothers movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. a good one gross yeah kyle this is a this is a real easy one um i'm you're gonna you're gonna go in there we're gonna go back in you're gonna hold up two pieces of paper <laughs> one piece of paper is gonna have the picture of guiji and the other piece of paper is going to have the actor who will play guiji and that's just all you're going to need to do because Kyle, we got Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan is Guiji, <laughs> and that is in the in the Smash Brothers extended universe. Tracy Morgan is Guiji. Um, and you might say like, oh, well, like how do we know that he can fill the role? And I'm just going to point to everything he's done in <laughs> Thirty Rock. Um, that's the kind of energy that Tracy Morgan is bringing to Guiji. Um, Todd, important question. Is is it CGI Tracy Morgan as Guiji, or is it Tracy Morgan covered in the like Nickelodeon goop from uh, Double Dare? Todd, can I answer this question for you? Because <laughs> I, I think we're imagining. I think we all know the answer. I think to this we're question. imagining the same Thirty Rock scene. I'm just there's a scene in Thirty Rock where they put Tracy Morgan on in the highway. A, in a um no stop uh, okay <laughs> Um, they put him in a um, in a morph suit with like the ping pong balls on it for CGI tracking. So I'm gonna suggest 
that it's just Tracy Morgan in a morph suit, in a green morph suit, and everyone acts like he's he's gooey and <laughs> in a in a CGI suit, but not CGI'd. Yes, no effects are involved. It's just Tracy Morgan in. Is that is that the one where he's like cr- crying at Garfield? Yes. <laughs> what I'm what I'm gonna say, Matt, is so in the in the original trailer. So a couple of different answers. So in the unfinished like early promo it's mostly just him in green paint. Like that's what it kind of looks like in the like early stage version before the CGI is put in. Um, in the end, it's much more uh, CGI Guiji than uh, Tracy Morgan features. However, when they released that trailer, there was such a backlash that they had to go back and redo it. And now it's way more Tracy Morgan face is what it is. It's it. This is, this is Tracy Morgan made out of goo. Good. Got Ugh. it. If you weren't wearing gooey suspenders, you would not really know that it is gooey. <laughs> where, uh, where my brain went was the scene where he's not wearing a shirt. He's out. He's in the. He's in the middle of the highway or the freeway. And he's like, like I'm a joke. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see why you said highway now. I thought you were making yeah. a. I thought you were making a bad joke. Um, never mind. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Um, and I just imagine it's that, but him covered in Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> all, all good. All very good options. Um, Andrew, who do, who have you cast? Who would you cast as BMF? Yeah, as BMF. BMF's got some catchphrases, and we want to make sure that we get those pulled through. That's the real important thing. So do when we? we when we did <laughs> yep. so when we when we did when we did the casting call, we had a lot of stocky, blocky, mid uh, middle age actors come in, and and there was a lot of cold readings of "stay cool," and uh, and. Gosh darn it. You know who won it? You know, have someone we haven't seen in a while. It's Michael Chiklis. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Michael Chiklis from, from The Shield. Oh, and boy. Also and known as Ben Grimm in the, in, the shitty, in the first shitty Fantastic Four movie. Um, we're going to get a lot of Michael Chiklis getting paid to say, stay cool. I don't want that. No, nobody does. Now, similar to Matt's question from the last one, is it Michael Chick- CGI Michael Chiklis, or is it Michael Chiklis in another like <laughs> full body, uncomfortable um, <laughs> prosthetic? No, I think it's just Michael Chiklis wearing a bunch of pillows, <laughs> looking like the Michelin <laughs> Man. <laughs> so, so an uncomfortable prosthetic, similar yeah. to Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just his um, the thing prosthetic colored. Blue. All white, <laughs> all white. <and> blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um. All right. That's that's pretty pretty good, Matt. Um. Who do you cast as, um, Longhorn? Uh, Longhorn from Eighteen Wheeler colon American Pro Trucker. Sorry, I should now, have said Matt, his full Are you name. getting a quarter every time we say the name of this game? Because you have to tell us if you do. No, Todd. I'd have to tell you if I got a quarter every time I said Eighteen Wheeler <laughs> colon American Pro Trucker. Nope. We're done with this bit. We brought the joke back. It's Yay. a callback. <laughs> so who is going to be cast as Longhorn from 18 Wheeler Colon American Pro Trucker? Uh, it needed to be somebody who is a couple things. It needed to be somebody who is a big guy, somebody who is A-OK with wearing a leather vest and nothing else so that the belly is always <laughs> exposed, someone who is unfortunately bald, and someone who can play a uh, dirty, dumpy character that everybody kind of hates to love. And I believe that man is David Keckner. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. That's a good Yeah. David Keckner, also known as Champ Kind from Anchorman. Oh. Or for those of you who are Office fans, Todd Packer from The Office. There, there it is. Yep. Yeah. That's the, that's the right answer to that question. I'm going to tell you that my quick Google image search of the words that you were saying in real time of big guy, leather vest, bald, dumpy <laughs> did not bring up uh, David Keckner. Who did it bring up? Some, uh, wait, wait, one of them's Michael Chiklis. <laughs> 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 well, what made me pick David Keckner more than anything is like for the longest time I didn't know David Keckner's name and I should have known him from a lot of other things, The Office or Anchorman included. Um but the only thing I could ever remember him from was that guy from Larry the Cable Guy's 2006 movie Larry the Cable Guy Health Inspector. Um so oh, I want no. 2006 Larry the Cable Guy era David Keckner. Uh 
playing this terrible, terrible role of uh, Longhorn from 18 Wheeler colon American Pro Trucker. Also, if David Keckner says no, we're just going to call him Larry the Cable Guy. But I like him less, so David Keckner, hopefully. That was a weird time of of humanity. Oh, yeah. what, when Blue Collar Comedy Tour was like the most popular thing on television? Yeah. The most successful comedy special until the Dane Cook one came out, I believe. Oh, I hate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that was Dane Cook's Circle of Insanity or something like that that beat out Blue Collar yeah. Comedy Tour. Something like that. Something. It was the one that he had the CD that everyone had that CD. Yeah. Um. All right. That those are some answers, some casting <laughs> decisions. Um, so why don't you guys just make one one last case for your character that I can take back to the Nintendo execs? See what they say. It is our duty to be ahead of the curve on this one and give the people what they want. And if you weren't already on board, I'm going to leave you with one important Tracy Morgan slash Tracy Jordan <laughs> quote that proves to you that he was born for this role of Guiji. And that is, your boos are not scaring me. I know most of you are not ghosts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Andrew. I've got a couple things here, a couple quotes pulled from the manual, but I think Please really, don't. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to opt for keeping it simple. Stay cool. Matt. Well, Kyle, I'll tell you this much. It's a long road to making Super Smash Brothers Ultimate the ultimatest game, and you better take Longhorn from 18-wheeler American colon pro trucker with you. I screwed up the name there at the end, but you get the point. I can only do that voice for so long. American Wheeler. <laughs> American Wheeler pro trucker. I... I like to think in your head you knew you missed the colon, but you know you had to put the colon in the sentence for the joke, and you're like, I can't, I can't, I can't stick the joke back. without the colon. I gotta do it. I didn't not think that. I'm gonna take all of this, especially those closing statements, um, back to the Nintendo execs and see what they say. Um, so while I do that, why don't you guys do some good vibes and say some good things about each other, if you can. If you can think of anything. If you can't, don't say anything at all. Those, that's the rule. Um, bad Mr. Frosty, Andrew, <laughs> gave me some <laughs> real nostalgia. Uh, BMF. Also, <laughs> yeah, B- BMF, BMF, as people call him. Um, the other thing that was very, very fun about that was that I remember Claymates a lot. And that game was really, really hard. And so to think it back, was really hard. Well, and to think back in your point of like, no, video games were just kind of bad a lot of the time <laughs> back then. Right. Like, I think that's probably very true because I think back to that game every now and again. And I bet if I picked it up yeah. now, I would just super hate it. So. Yeah. Well, it was one of those like in that span of SNES games, it was like, hey, just collect the things, you fat nerd. Like, yeah. I was like, that's the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> I may be paraphrasing. And like, if you you're so like to put it in in perspective for you other two guys, like maybe that haven't played it and aren't going to run out and buy it. I wouldn't. (laughs) So what you know how in any Mario game, you're like little Mario and Mm -hmm. then big Mario when you have a mushroom or like fire Mario, if you have a fire flower, your default stage was like ball of clay that has a punching fist. Oh, no. And then when (laughs) you pick up other colored clay, you'd become that animal, which was infinitely better than being the punching fist. The punching fist was the biggest downer. Sure. Like, you were just so screwed. Yeah. Um, Also, there's a lot of racism in that game. (sighs) Really? I bet there probably is. Yeah, it doesn't age well. Didn't see Uh, that. You get, you get, Mm. well, the reason you're a ball of clay is because you get turned into a ball of clay by a witch doctor. Oh. Oh. Um, Dink. (laughs) You you go to, you fight endangered species in Cape Canaveral back when, uh, Back when coral reefs still existed, oh. ding. Uh, you go to Japan and you fight nope. um, very angry, yep, very angry, very very cartoonish um, samurai men, and then you go to Africa and you fight uh, very cartoonish oh. looking. Yeah, it's like a fucking Bugs Bunny cartoon. It's Ooh. it's rough. Ouch! <laughs> Yikes. Anyway, yeah. to finish what I was saying, um, <laughs> and this was our Matt, good vibe section. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good vibes. Matt, the the way that that yours strikes me as a very good choice is because currently, right now, I think the DLC trend is they are promoting games that are coming out. Like, there's some big game in the future that's coming out, and like that's why we're getting a DLC character. 
and I just imagine that for some reason, 18 wheeler colon American pro trucker, like double XL double wide is going to be dropped in like 2021. Uh, And so because of that, we're going to get this hero at the end of summer 2020. And it's going to be the exact version that you said where like there's 20 people, like less than 2% of the fan base is going to be like, oh, hell yeah, here I am. (laughs) But like all the the developers just sitting on piles of money and they're like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, man. Uh, This was a fun one. Um, Todd, your answer was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, thank you. The the badness really dropped off after the first prompt which i feel like you took the high road you're welcome (laughs) yeah and there was there was much less much less unnecessary sex included (laughs) so that's good guiji is sexual but like (laughs) you don't have to make him sexual right no he just he just oozes sexuality like like there could be some art that is like intense but it doesn't (laughs) have to be sexual Right, he's like he's like a nude painting. You just have to you just admire it for the <laughs> way it is. Him. <laughs> oh man, what is happening? Your final smash kicks ass though. I was thinking of like the the brawl, like the Luigi zone, the negative zone that he does. Yeah, that's that's where my mind went. I'm assuming that's where you where you drew that from. Yeah, um, that was, that was very fun. Um, Matt, good job on Longhorn, bud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I love just taking a sentence worth of lore and just turning that into an entire thing. You basically made a character based off of a character select screen and, and yep. God damn it. Like if, if that, if, if, uh, if you can't make anything out of that, then, well, then what know. are we doing here? What, yeah, what, what are, are we, we even doing, doing here? Yeah. Oh, you put in the, I am a Jedi picture. Yeah, of found it. <laughs> Tracy Morgan. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Longhorn is really fun. I like the idea that he's, he's like a Wario. Um, just kind of bouncing around inexplicably. Like I love the idea of the f- of him defying physics and like this three hundred pound fat man trying to do a double jump. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the or, like doing like a recovery. The one question that I definitely could never have answered on this podcast was like, "What's what's his recovery move?" I do not know. Like <laughs> yeah, I have no answer to that. <laughs> yeah, who knows? It doesn't matter. I think like there's nothing funnier. Like in the same reason why Snake was so silly in Brawl and watching Mario in Donkey Kong Land and um, in Odyssey, like, there's just nothing funnier to me than real ass-looking people in Nintendo <laughs> worlds. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, Link and Samus still, like, look like cartoons, but just having, like, a dude <laughs> is just <laughs> so good. A, 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 a person standing next to Mario. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's good. It's, it's very funny. Like, I, I have this mental image of, like, Simon and Richter and Ryu and Ken and like I don't know Snake and other human creatures from the Super Smash Brothers mm-hmm. Ultimate like sitting around at the end of the fight drinking a beer while like Yoshi and Mario and Luigi and Peach and Daisy are like eating super shrooms in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, uh Todd, way to bring Guiji in here in a way that makes us the least uncomfortable that Guiji possibly could. Still very uncomfortable, but much less than it could have been. And and for that, we thank you. Also, like Andrew said, your final smash is, is super good. I uh, hate playing as Luigi, but I do really love his old final smash. It's like in a God of Gavita, and then all of a <laughs> sudden, everybody's asleep and hurting, and Luigi's in some weird zen state. I think that's very funny, um, and I like it a lot. Andrew, uh, BMF, man. What a guy. BMF. Uh, I, I, as much as I have hated being on the side of Smash, where it's like, man, who the hell is this guy? Like, why, why is this the DLC character? I've never heard of him. I also really have enjoyed being on that side of Smash. Be like, God, I've never played that game, but this character is a lot of fun. Um, and I really enjoy that for Bad Mr. Frosty. I've never played any of these clay games, but... Uh, Please don't. I, no, that's best. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're not high on the gotta get list. Um, but I do really enjoy the idea of like just plopping the abominable snowman in the midst of the madness that is Whatever. Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> and um, like, why not? Right? Yeah. Also, just Michael Chiklis is great, and that makes me <laughs> laugh. 
And I think it's important to note that like it it's literally a snowman. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's, like just, he's just yeah. he's like Frosty the snowman, but he's got but a frowny clay. face. But but clay and, and grittier. Yeah. And he's mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um so <laughs> we've we've come back. The the Nintendo execs have uh reached a decision. How I'll never know. Um but we we've reached a decision and uh starting out Todd Luigi is not going to be the next DLC character. Um they they don't want to do first party Nintendo properties. That's just it's not what they're looking for this time. The dark web is going to is doxing you as you speak. We'll 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 make him a costume. We're we're prepared. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's it's a skin coming up for Luigi though. So Six of one, half dozen of another. Um, <laughs> Can we talk for a second about how realistic that is? Like, I guarantee you we're going to get a Luigi skin yeah. as Gooigi by the end of the year. I, I don't know why we don't. Did we ever get a, a Mr. L um, skin? No. Like, those are things that I don't know why we don't have. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, you have to pay $15 just for the Gooigi skin. Now. You should take some of that energy. You should take some of that energy you throw at um, harassing Jim Jordan every day and harass <laughs> Nintendo to give hey, you a Hey, Jim Gooigi Jordan, skin. if you're listening to this podcast, you're trash. <laughs> Wear a coat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you slob. So from there, our, our next DLC character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is going to be uh, throwback legend, fan favorite, bad Mr. Frosty. Oh, yes. man. Uh, oh, damn it. Uh, I, I thought cool. it was going to Matt. I did, too. I thought it was. I really thought Longhorn <laughs> was going to get it. And and they let me in on a little a little secret why. It is because they are, they are bringing a new addition to the Clay Fighter series to Switch um, in 2020 for uh, Clay Fighter election year. And it's as terrible <laughs> as you can imagine it would be. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, Matt, they, they very much liked um, Longhorn. They just didn't think the, the trucker vibe was quite what they wanted to go for this time around. Cowards. Um, but, <laughs> but they appreciate your effort. Um, they also can't get that voice of, um, of the radio driver out of their heads. Because it haunts them at night. You better take some extra fuel with you. There it is. <laughs> so, with that all said, thanks for listening in to Debate This. Follow along with the argument on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at DebateThisCast. And check our website at DebateThisCast.com. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review so more people can hear our nerdy, dumb show. Until next time, I am Kyle too tired to do this any longer harper i'm todd tracy morgan is guiji thomas i'm andrew call me daddy henderson and i'm matt a year without santa's dong is a thing i said today <laughs> cole <laughs> saying thanks for debating with us and if you think we're wrong you can come fight us behind the swing sets nerds but we understand if you don't come check it out. Because <laughs> we're, we're apparently a bunch of creeps. Uh, Goodbye forever. <laughs> a rear without Santa Claus was pretty clever.